Hello, I'm Prahita Konduri. I'm a postdoc at the Amsterdam University Medical Centers. In the INSYST consortium, uh, in the work package 2, one of the tasks was to generate a vessel atlas, which involves a library of vessel geometries. For this, we started with segmenting the intracranial arteries from the baseline CT and geography scans. We used a deep learning based method that, that was developed by NICOLAB to extract the intracranial arteries that you see on the right here. We post-processed them and using a software developed by University of Washington, we extracted the global geometry features of these arteries and also labeled each of the arteries. As you can see here, each color represents a segment of the artery in the intracranial anterior circulation. And from these segments, we can extract the tortuosity, length and the angle between each of the arterial segments. Furthermore, we extracted more local geometry characteristics and we assessed the association between the local geometry characteristics and the probability of a successful outcome. And we found that the angles in the uh, in intracranial T-junction are very important and associated with the probability of getting a successful treatment. We also found that the curvature of the ICA or a segment of the ICA is associated with a longer procedure. These uh, associations are crucial for validating the findings from the work package 4, which involves the in silico modeling of thrombectomy procedures, wh which is more dependent on local geometry characteristics. We also had to find ways to integrate the vessel geometry library into the virtual population, as it was required as an input for the thrombectomy models. For this, we unfortunately couldn't find any, any significant associations between the local geometry and the clinical characteristics that were used to describe the virtual population. So we just used intercorrelations between the geometry characteristics and, for example, between the diameters and between the radii of curvature to extract inputs for the in silico thrombectomy models. We also assessed the completeness of the circle of villus uh, uh, based on the baseline CT and geography scans. And in particular, we developed a completeness of circle of villus score, which, which was a seven point scale. We then found that there was an association between an, uh, a higher completeness of the collateral score and the normal collateral score, which represents more leptomeningeal or distal artery connections between the major intracranial arteries. So this shows that there was an association between the primary collateral network and the secondary collateral network within the brain. Furthermore, we assessed if there is uh, an association between the stent characteristics during the treatment and if it influences the outcome of the treatment, but more in technical sense. For this, we studied how the stent was placed in each pass of the treatment, as you can see here. What you see here is a, DC, a DSA scan of the patient during the procedure of the occlusion here and the placement of the stent on the right. So we studied if the stent was placed correctly in terms of the location of the occlusion, if it was deployed well, and if, if it was in a straight or a curved geometry. And we assessed if this influences technical outcome of how well the artery recanalizes. But we found that there was no association between the stent characteristics and treatment outcome. To conclude, we found that the local geometry characteristics are associated with technical outcome of treatment, and we could not find any association between the stent characteristics and outcome. But we believe that further analysis on a larger database is required to actually validate these findings. I would like to thank all the Work Package 2 members uh, for their contributions to this, to this study and also look forward to collaborating with them again. Thank you.